So our next video is about concavity, and this is where we talk about whether our gradient is changing in a, in a way that's making it bend upwards or bend downwards on our curve. So say we've got a curve something like this. We want to figure out where is it concave down and where is it concave up. Now concave down means that it looks something like this. So this is concave down, or it's some portion of a graph that's doing that sort of shape. It means that the gradient is starting off um, being positive and moving towards being negative. So the rate of change of the gradient is less than zero. So that is what we um, have looked at in previous vid videos of finding that second derivative that will be less than zero for something to be concave down because the gradient is gradually getting less and less. So its rate of change is, is negative um, and it's changing towards from moving from a positive into a negative or from a negative into an even steeper negative and so on. And a concave up, the reverse is true. So concave up looks like this or some part of that curve. And in that case, the second derivative would be greater than zero because the rate of change of the gradient is positive, meaning the gradient is gradually getting more and more um, positive. It's either moving from negative to positive or it's moving from positive to being even steeper positive. OK, so if we can split up our curve now into the sections that are concave down or concave up, it's going to look like this. So the first thing is to take note of where the changes will be. So we've got um, a point there, which is a point of inflection where something different starts to happen to that gradient. Um, we have our curve starting to go up. We have another point here where it stops getting steeper positive and it turns back around the other way. And we have our curve um, coming back down again. And then another one here where again we start to see something different and the gradient is stopping going towards the negative direction and it's turning back around again. So let's split the graph up into those sections. So on the first section that we've marked off there, what's happening as we look across our curve is that um, that gradient starts off being positive, then it gets shallower and shallower and shallower. Now we still have kind of positive here, um, but then if we had carried that curve on in the way that it was going, it would turn around and it would become negative. So we have a concave down shape. On the next section, we can see that the opposite is happening. The gradient now changes from instead of where it was going down before, we now have it getting more and more positive. So it's moving from being shallow to steeper positive there. So it's concave up. And then you can follow the same logic with the next bit. This is turning back around again. We have concave down. And then this final one where it changes just here, it stops going um, into the steep, uh, steep negatives. It gets shallower and shallower negative and then goes back into a positive gradient. So this is a concave up. Now you've previously seen how to do the second derivative to work out um, the types of uh, stationary points that you have. We can also use the second derivative to figure out what uh, section of the graph we're in, whether it's a concave up or a concave down section. So we use this uh, second derivative being greater than or equal, uh, greater than or less than zero to work out if it's going to be a concave up or concave down function. So everywhere that it's concave down, we have that the second derivative is less than zero. And everywhere that we have the second derivative being greater than zero is the concave up portions. OK, now one final little thing is uh, we've talked about points of inflection before. Some of them are more obvious than others, and um, the ones that are kind of easy to spot are the ones that are this one here. That's the one that's probably the easiest that you, you would recognize straight away as a point of inflection. But actually, anywhere that it changes from being concave up to concave down or vice versa, that is also a point of inflection. So all of these are referred to as points of inflection. And at a point of inflection, the second derivative changes from um, one side of zero to the other. So exactly at that point, you would have the second derivative as equal to zero 
and that's how you can find points of inflection. OK, so we've got an example where we want to find the range of values of x for which this curve that we're given is concave up. So the first thing is to find out where that cutoff point might be. So we're look, looking for the points of inflection so that we can say um, on one side of this point of inflection it will be concave up. So for points of inflection we need the second derivative. So here's the result of differentiating once. And if we find the second derivative now we can get our um, uh, expression that we need. Now, the second derivative is minus 6x plus 12. To find points of inflection, we set that equal to 0. So 6x will equal 12, so x is 2. So we know we have a point of inflection at x equals 2. Now we just need to figure out what's happening on either side of it, so we know if it's um, going to be concave up or concave down. So if we just test that out now with um, a couple of values, when x equals 3, that second derivative will equal negative 6. So that is less than 0. Therefore, it is concave down. And if we test on the other side of it, so if x equals 1, doing a similar thing here, d2y by dx squared will equal 6, which is obviously more than zero, therefore it's concave up. So we're not asked to draw a picture here, but if we were just trying to imagine what it looks like, just to make things a little easier to see, we have something that changes at x equals 2. At x equals 1, we've got um, a concave up looking shape, and at x equals 3, we've got a concave down looking shape. So it'll look something like this. So we have that point of inflection happening at x equals 2, just there, that we um, worked out just up here. And then to the right of it, we have something that's doing a concave down shape. And to the left, we have something doing a concave up shape. Now, in our question, we were asked to give the range for which the curve is concave up. So we just need to finish off with that statement. The curve is concave up when x is less than 2. Note it's not less than or equal to, because at 2 it would be exactly equal to 0. It's neither up nor down. Um, so we've got a strictly less than.